I am Captain Randy Kramer, United States Marine Corps Special Section, Covert Military Space Program arm of the Marine Corps. Why don't you share your experience with the insectoids? Well, um, so like I said, we primarily engaged with them militarily at first. Um, their typical MO in combat is to send out swarms of other genetically engineered insects. So fighting the insectoids is primarily fighting off swarms of giant insects, which is no fun at all, absolutely no fun at all. Um, but there was a time when a small squad was on a patrol and we were going by the front of one of their hives and there were some of them outside milling around sort of doing something functional with some uh, boxes or something that they were bringing out outside. And it just kind of struck me that since we kind of knew from it, running into them in smaller groups that if we were not perceived as a threat, we would often just be ignored even if we were in a, a visual range. Unlike the reptoids, if we were in a visual range of the reptoids and um, you know, we were in just about, unless we outnumbered them vastly, that was going to start a fight. But with the insectoids, we could be relatively close to them in a small group and they would not perceive us as a threat and would therefore not attack. So there is a one particular day in which um, I sort of just felt deeply inclined uh, and compelled to walk up to them and see if I could just start a conversation and uh, did start a conversation and um, essentially was the beginning point of a contact relationship with them. So then we had a an exchange program that was about six months long in which uh, several officers from the ambassadorial corps, several officers from our facility and a few enlisted personnel who accompanied those officers on a daily basis for about six months to this insectoid um, hive, which I got to be a part of that uh, team. So I spent like almost six months every day going back and forth and having these very, all I can say is sort of very calm, orderly, very pleasant conversations and interactions with them. So. Again, they're not overtly aggressive, they're more defensive. So once we really got to know them uh, personally, they were really quite friendly, they were quite nice, um, super smart, super dedicated workers. You know, they're, you know, they work 22 hours out of a 24 hour day pretty much. But um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, but they're also insects. They're really different than us. They're, they're, we're mammals, they're insects, there's a lot of, characteristics that are just really different but we were certainly able to communicate and get along and have a positive interaction from that experience they were mostly a what I would think of as sort of a, a deep brown or an almost black color kind of like a, a dark colored black ant so if you came home and one was standing there waiting for you in your living room just to say hi, you'd probably crap your pants, right? I mean, just I mean, just because seeing that up close, it would be shocking. You'd probably crap your pants if someone, you know, if a spaceship landed and you know five or six of these guys came out. Even again, if they were not being threatening, they would probably just be terrifying because they're giant freaking insects. I mean, that's plays with your brain a little bit so but they're again they're quite friendly uh, you know when you're not being aggressive towards them I did my best to get used to them but to be honest um, I mean I, I had a bit of an insect phobia for years after you know combat operations with them so it took me a while to get over that really <laughs> they did occasionally uh, go into battle using a plasma rifle that was basically like a lightning gun so fires out a plasma beam, which is sort of like a bolt of lightning as opposed to a, like a plasma ball or something like that. Uh, but no, they did not wear clothing or uniforms. They're buck naked or, you know, they're wearing their exoskeleton on the outside. So 
Oh, which I, I think is an interesting sub point. They think we're gross because we have our insides on the outside. So we essentially all the, they have an exoskeleton with all their guts on the inside and all their muscles on the inside. We have a skeleton on the inside and we wear all of our meat on the outside. They think that's gross. <laughs> oh, humans, they've got all their insides on their outsides. Ooh. Do they actually communicate that, that to you? Or not just... not in so many words, but you know, you you do get this when you're having the psionic communication with them. You know, every once in a while, you can just get this feeling that they're just like, think how weird it is that we are the opposite of them. And that's kind of grosses them out. For the most part, now we would go visit them. We would be wearing our external body armor, which then to them is like us having exoskeleton. So that is actually more comfortable for them to be for us to be wearing our external body armor because then we're wearing an exoskeleton like they're wearing an exoskeleton and all our insides are tucked inside but when we're just wearing sort of normal clothing they think it's kind of gross <laughs> i think that's hilarious can you describe the spirituality of these insects well they certainly had a, a metaphysical psionic spiritual connection with the planet uh, that they lived on and they believed that it was a parent-child type of relationship uh, that they viewed the planet as their great mother and um, had a deeply intense relationship with what I would say is a, a, a deep spiritual relationship which demonstrates itself in um, a way in which they definitely are in harmony with their environment and the planet that they live on. So they're not spending time you know, ejecting poisons or toxic gases or smoke from industrialization into the air. They don't pollute the water. They don't pollute the ground. You know, they consider that taking care of the environment that they live in is how the environment that they live in takes care of them. So they do, they feel like this symbiotic relationship with their environment and their planet in that way. They know very, that's very practical, but at the same time is um, in their own way, deeply spiritual to them. They're very intellectual species meaning they're sort of really left brain when you want to think about it but that doesn't mean that they have no emotions um, or that they have no sense of feeling or spirituality 